when you are praying in, in other tongues you are plugging yourself to the power source and you are generating energy on the inside so as you are going in the spirit kayato zini mini kayen don zivele taya gadabaha zon don ben den gen den don zen bele kayen na noze laboram don zili frene kayen na nanha jena you may have entered your prayer room weak in the spirit but you emerge strengthened in your inner man hey guys good day good day good day you're welcome to another episode of our ongoing series the baptism of the holy spirit series is been um a wonderful journey with you from the one this is the five already and episode five you know um we are gradually getting to the end of this series you know um by the grace of god it should be a seven day series unless um you know <laughs> we get an extra day uh, do you understand so um thank you for being there if you're a returning subscriber thank you for you know being here thank you for going through this journey with us if this is your first time being here i want you to um subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell it will you know give you the um the opportunity to be notified whenever we go live with a video do you understand and then um the playlist for the previous episodes you know will be in the description below so do where to check it out listen to the previous episodes even as you um continue with this episode with us do you understand so if this is the kind of content you like i want you to also give us a thumbs up you know click that um like icon is not going to bite you you know just click it and what it does to the video is that it um it shoots up the algorithm of the video so that you know youtube begins to recommend it to other um youtube users and then this way the message of the kingdom gets spread abroad and also make your comments too it also helps the algorithm so um this in this episode we'll be considering um some misconceptions about tongues you know things like did jesus speak in tongues you'll be having your answer right in this episode um questions um like that you know i i, I don't know if you've ever wondered if jesus spoke in tongues <laughs> they understand so we'll be answering such questions in this episode so just sit tight you know enjoy the ride you it will be worth it it will be valuable it will be a time well spent and it will impact positively on your um journey with the holy spirit so we'll get right on into the show you know it, i'll be as quick as possible because there are some points about um five points that i have to talk about in like 15 minutes or 20 or thereabout so i'll be as quick as possible but i also hope that you follow through and you know understand so the first misconception i would like to talk about is that um speaking in tongues guarantees heaven that is wrong speaking in tongues does not guarantee heaven but guarantees that you are able to spend eternity with god is that you have surrendered to jesus as your savior as your lord do you understand so whether you speak in tongues or you don't speak in tongues if you you know um if that relationship with jesus is is um is valid then you have a place in the kingdom of god do you understand john 3 verse 16 it says for god so loved the world that he for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, not that he gave tongues. He said he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So whenever we are joined with Jesus, we come into oneness with the Godhead. You know, we receive the life of God and it's that life that grants us access, you know, to the kingdom of God and you know to the throne room so what gives you what guarantees your um, um heavenly experience is you know your connection with jesus so if you are watching and you've not come into that oneness with the godhead you've not accepted jesus as your lord and savior i'm not talking about if you attend church or not i'm not talking about if your parents if um your parents are are, are, are part of the clergy or maybe you've been in church you've been playing instruments and all of that that's not what we are talking about we are talking about a personal one-on-one -on -one and encounter with jesus an encounter with jesus where you realized your um inadequacy you realize your wretchedness the wretchedness of your soul and you cried out to jesus and said jesus i know what you've done on the cross for me and i believe in your death on the cross and today i accept you if you've not done that it means that you are not part of the fold you are not part of the people we are talking about so i want you 
is an easy experience just believe in your heart that jesus died for you on the cross you know accept him as your lord and then pronounce it say jesus i accept you into my life today i believe that you died you are the son of god you died for my sins and i accept your death your burial and your resurrection give me a new life thank you jesus it's as simple as that so it's just a prayer acknowledging that jesus has saved you that jesus died for your sins and that you are commending your life to him for an ex exchange so if you just made that prayer congratulations you are a child of god you are a son of god and you know you can continue your ride so a um, misconception number two speaking in tongues is a sign of spiritual maturity that is wrong speaking in tongues is not a sign of spiritual maturity so if you have mr a and mr b if mr a is speaking in tongues and mr b is not speaking in tongues it does not necessarily mean that mr a is more spiritually mature than mr b do you understand speaking in tongues is actually a tool for spiritual maturity not a sign it is a tool you know it's what you can engage in your work with god and it helps your spiritual maturity so in first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 4 the scripture would say um that he that speaks in an, in an unknown tongue it defies himself do you understand builds up himself so it means that speaking in tongues is a tool for building up yourself do you understand not that it is a sign that you are mature spiritually do you understand because someone can give his life to christ today and be baptized in the holy ghost today and start speaking in tongues today while somebody that has been a christian for years may not may not have come into the experience of the baptism of the holy spirit so it does not now mean that the person that was you know that just got saved today is now more spiritually mature than the person that got saved 10 years ago that has been interacting with the word of god actually is the interaction with the word of god that you know is the major um, um um tool for our spiritual growth so somebody that has been interacting with the word of god um first peter 2 verse 2 says um as newborn babe desire the sincere make of the world that you may grow thereby do you understand so somebody that has been interacting with the word of god for five years and somebody that just gave his life to christ today and is speaking in other tongues you know you cannot compare their maturity so speaking in tongues is not necessarily a tool um, it's not necessarily a sign for spiritual maturity it is a tool for spiritual maturity um we move on to um point number three speaking in tongues is not for every believer <laughs> yeah um, this is a misconception that actually keeps some people out of their experience you know and most times they are their anchor scripture for um proposing this theory is from first corinthians chapter 12 verse 28 to 30. so god has appointed and placed in the church for his own use first apostles chosen by christ second prophets those who foretell the future those who speak a new message from god to the people third teachers then those who work miracles then those with the gifts of healings the helpers the administrators and speakers in various kinds of unknown tongues are all apostles are all prophets are all teachers are all workers of miracles do all have gifts of healing do all speak with tongues and you know do all interpret and they just you know pick out that that verse do all speak in tongues and they're like ah speaking in tongues is not for every believer well when you read that this scripture in context you know i, I read it from verse 28 to give you the context um partly the context of what apostle paul was talking about so apostle paul was talking was talking about ministerial offices or ministerial gifts do you understand so um he was saying that um some are given to be prophets in ephesians chapter 4 you know where you see the um these gifts that he outlined again he said that when jesus ascended he made some he gave gifts to men he made some um apostles some prophets some evangelists some pastors and teachers do you understand so these are ministerial offices not every person occupies such office do you understand so this is what he was talking about so when he says um some are giving the gift of interpret of tongues he was talking about tongues as a ministerial gift 
do you understand so there is the tongues that every believer can speak then there is the tongue that is given as a gift to the body that kind of tongue is the kind that can be interpreted so when somebody with the gift of tongues speaks in tongues another person with the gift of interpretation of tongues can interpret that tongue and pass the message of god to the church so that one is for the edification of the body do you understand so he was not talking about the tongues that is available to every believer for the building up for the edification of the person of the believer so let's look at mark chapter 16 verse 17 you know where jesus actually um, talked about tongues these signs will accompany those who have believed in my name they shall cast out demons they will speak in new tongues so here jesus is saying that every person that believes that have come to believe in me as their savior and lord he said in my name they will cast out demons in my name they will speak in new tongues so we see jesus saying that every person not a few not a select few but every person that believes in me he said one of the signs is that they will do what they will speak in new tongues so apostle paul could you know could not have been negating what jesus said do you understand so apostle paul was talking about a ministerial gift to the body so not everybody is given that ministerial gift but everybody um every believer can speak in tongues so the tongues that everybody can speak is the tongues for edification the tongues for his or her personal use but when it comes to the gift to the body do you understand some persons are given um the gift of tongues that you know they speak you know tongues plus interpretation of tongues equals prophecy so the same way that a prophet will come and pass a message from god thus saith the lord you know and is and it edifies the church this in the same way a person with the gift of tongues can speak in tongues and the person with the with interpretation can interpret and it becomes a message a prophecy just like the prophet prophesied a prophecy to the body for the edification of the body i don't know if you understand so this is the difference so apostle paul was not saying that every believer cannot speak in tongues he was rather you know you know um giving um the 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 gift i'm talking about the gift of tongues so every believer can speak in tongues so um misconception number four jesus did not speak in tongues and <laughs> that is wrong <laughs> so um maybe you've been wondering did jesus speak in tongues now you know the bible you will not find a place in the scripture that the bible says that um and jesus spoke in tongues right no you will not find it in scripture but now there are some things with scriptures you can you know make uh you can infer from scripture from what the scripture what you've um known from the scripture you can infer some things now our first point is is this jesus is the full expression of what we know as grace now you remember that whatever we have whatever we are doing as believers you know we are doing it under grace you know there is the dispensation of the law and there's the dispensation of grace so we are in the dispensation of grace so everything that we are you know that we are doing now is available in grace whatever is not available in grace you know it cannot be you know cannot be done by any believer do you understand so everything is available in grace and now jesus christ is the full expression of grace john chapter 1 verse 17 he says for the law was given through moses but grace and truth came through jesus christ now grace came through jesus christ so jesus was the full embodiment of grace so it means that every and anything we would experience as believers was found in jesus christ second timothy chapter 1 verse 9 and he said for he delivered us and saved us and called us with a holy calling a calling that leads to a consecrated life a life set apart a life of purpose not because of our works or because of any personal merits we could do nothing to end this but because of his own purpose and grace his own purpose and grace which was granted to us in christ jesus before the world began so we begin to see that grace is not a new concept grace has been available from the foundations of the world from even before the foundations of the world it has been available in christ verse 10 
but now that extraordinary purpose and grace has been fully disclosed king james will say revealed and realized by us through the appearing of our savior christ jesus now what this scripture is saying is that grace has been available from before the foundation of the world it was only revealed to us when jesus christ appeared in person so everything we are experiencing on that grace has been available in christ so when jesus appeared on earth he began to live out who he was grace personified do you understand so if we are able to speak in tongues if jesus said anyone that believes in me speak should speak in, in tongues it means that he had that technology it was a technology that he operated in jesus cannot call us into something he did not experience do you understand the second point is that we know that tongues accompany the baptism of the holy spirit right now question was jesus baptized with the holy spirit you can find that answer in luke chapter 3 verse 22 and the holy spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove and a voice came from heaven you are my son my beloved in you i am well pleased and delighted so king james say and the, the the holy spirit came upon him like a dove so we see that the holy spirit came upon jesus this is the baptism of the holy spirit upon the life of jesus do you understand so jesus you know from birth he had a new life uh -huh. but the baptism occurred here when john the baptist poured water on him do you understand so we see that jesus was baptized by the holy spirit so is it possible that he was baptized but he did not give himself to the aspect of speaking in tongues i doubt i sincerely doubt <laughs> that that occurred do you understand so if jesus was baptized in the holy spirit he would have given himself to the full expression of the holy ghost which includes speaking in other tongues and then um the third point that you can infer with is that jesus in several places in the scripture says that jesus prayed all through the night jesus prayed for long hours sometimes 10 hours sometimes more sometimes all through the night do you understand so how was he able to do that have you tried praying in 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 your understanding for five hours <laughs> how was the experience so how was he able to pull it off the second question how was he able to pray fervently and groan to the extent that his 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 sweat became like droplets of blood <laughs> it was by the influence of the holy ghost and the yielding to the technology of tongues i so much believe that that was the the that that is the answer you know do you understand so from this um point we can we can conclude that jesus spoke in other tongues number one he will not tell you to do what he did not do he is our perfect example he is our perfect example do you understand so if jesus did not that means that you know we can choose not to do you understand <laughs> but now the point is is now if god made tongues available are we saying that he does not know what he's doing that we can you know live our lives without tongue if it's not something that's that is so important god would not have made it available god is not a waster god does not waste resources he does not waste experiences so whatever he gave us it means that there is a reason and it's important that we that we you know plunge into it the final misconception we'll be dealing with is if you don't speak in tongues then it automatically means that you've not been baptized with the holy ghost wrong that is wrong totally wrong you know it's a common misconception you know when once someone is not speaking in tongues it means that the person is not baptized with the holy spirit but it's wrong let's look at the the you know i mentioned the law of first mention in a past episode so the baptism of the holy spirit first occurred in the new testament in acts chapter 2 verse 4 so we'll be looking at other scripture to understand so that scripture says that they were all filled with the holy ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance so it means that first of all they were all filled with the holy ghost so they were all baptized with the holy ghost the second line now says and they began so number one they were baptized and then they began to speak in other tongues 
as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. So it's possible to accomplish number one and not yield to number two. So they could have been baptized and not yield to speaking in other tongues. Do you understand? Okay, let me break it down further. Now, the job of the Holy Spirit is to give utterance. He said they were baptized in the Holy Ghost and they began as the disciples began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So this, the, the job of the Holy Ghost is to give you utterance, but it is your job to speak. So it's possible that you'll be baptized and you will have the utterance and yet you will not um, open your mouth to speak. So not everybody that is not speaking in tongues is not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Some have been baptized. In fact, from my interaction with people, Quite a number of people who are not speaking in tongues have actually been baptized because when you ask them, they'll tell you, ah, there was one time, this time, that, that time, you know, I felt a, a nudging to speak um, something I don't understand, but I did not. Do you understand? So it's an evidence that they have already been baptized with the Holy Ghost. Do you understand? So that someone is not speaking in tongues does not mean that the person is not baptized. So when you meet people that are not speaking but are baptized, you know, what you just need to do is to, you know, help them to yield to the, um, to, you know, the utterance of the Spirit, of the Holy Spirit and begin to, you know, speak it out. So that's the help that those people need. Do you understand? Uh-huh. So if you are right there now and you've had this nudging, but you did not yield i want to tell you you are baptized with the holy spirit and i want you to just shut your eyes right now and you know i will pray for you you receive that utterance again what i want you to do is to open your mouth and yield to that utterance in the name of jesus kaya genon zisevante kaya menononja holy spirit afresh come afresh upon this ones holy ghost come afresh upon this ones salivrente andes sonte vre andes belunzi fre antes kiveletaya ganonj ensi vre tova lata menonzinte kababalin solo vre kaya now in the name of jesus and sune kababa nen don si vele kaya ga don jetaya now kebolotondi rusile bruga vanatia genon zikai don zente brenin kabala nan deskovretaha oh jesus thank you holy ghost thank you holy ghost in the name of jesus all right so i i believe that some of the misconceptions you um have about tongues have been cleared do you understand and you know it's something that you should you know with these misconceptions out of the way you should yield more to the um um to this technology called tongues um by tomorrow we'll be looking at some hindrances you know to the baptism of the holy spirit what makes people not to yield to this baptism of the holy spirit so see you tomorrow for another time